Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine and this week we're going to create an automatic basketball scorekeeper using a micro bit and a color sensor. So you might be wondering why a color sensor? Because surely I should just do a motion sensor? So once the ball goes past the hoop, that counts as a point. Uh, except we don't have two hoops. <laughs> we don't have two hoops at home in the back garden, and we don't have two hoops at work where we play a lot of throw some paper into a basketball hoop. Uh, so we need to determine teams, because everything's competition, right? <laughs> and the way we determine teams is by the color of your ball. So if you have a red ball, you're on the red team, and when the red ball goes in, you've scored a point. Um, but we need to keep track of those scores. So a color sensor connected to a board that can record data is what I'm gonna use. Would you do it differently and how? But let's look at how I did it. Let's look at some of the equipment then. So I'm gonna put the shopping list on the Element 14 community website, which the link will be down below. So we're gonna go with a Microbit B2 because um, it's got a little speaker and let's do a little uh, song when a basket is scored. Then we have this color sensor. It is a TCS34725. Um, it's from DFR Robot. Is it DFR Robot or DF Robot? And you can get it in Farnell. So it gives us the RGB color value of the item that it's scanning. And I think the scanner is there. And this connects over two pins to the microbit. Well, actually four pins. So it's got ground and power and SDA and SCL, which are pins 19 and 20 on the microbit. So we're going to need a breakout board. So this is the Catronic one, I think, besides some cables between here and here. I think that's everything. Uh, I might some add some actual RGB LEDs. So it kind of lights up red when a red ball is scored. That might look cool. This is an RGB sensor, but no project is complete without RGB LEDs, of course. Let's get started. Let's assemble this. So here's the Catronic board, and you can see uh, 19 and 20 aren't actually automatically soldered on. Um, this board is quite old, so maybe on the newer boards it is. So I'm just going to quickly solder that up. Okay, yeah, it's not very pretty, but it's there. Um, so we've got our pins 19 and 20. By the way, check out how messy my desk is. <laughs> so we're connecting, uh, let's connect ground and power first. So I always love to connect ground first and power. Plug the mic a bit in, actually go get a power source next. So yeah, just Connecting ground and power has turned on the LEDs um, around the sensor. That's pretty cool. Let's connect up the actual data pins next. So we have 19 and 20 on the screen will be the actual instructions. That's the micro bit and the sensor connected now. You can see the LED shining down there. So we're going to need some red, green, blue volunteers, which I have some handy um, to test this out. I'm going to add the LED strip later because that's like an extra feature. I just want to get the basics working first uh, and test that out before we add anything fancy. We're going to use the Arduino to code the micro bit and Adafruit have a nice guide on how to get it working together. I've got a micro bit version 2, but this seems to work even though this is quite an old guide. Um, so if you just go to these steps. I did need to upgrade my Arduino for the first time. I haven't used it in a while, so that might be a good idea. Uh, I didn't need this, um, the soft device. If it's not working, maybe try that step. And then everything worked from there, which is great. And then I used the Adafruit library uh, code sample as well. So just copied this code. Again, I'll put all the links on the Element 14 community for you to find. So let me show it to you running. So here's my volunteers and here's the sensor. So you can see the data is just kind of scrolling along there. Um, so we're just looking for the RGB values. So if I point this light at the red guy, so you'll see the numbers are coming up for G and B, but you'll notice that red is always bigger. 
Yeah, so 154.99977. Even though the numbers vary, red is always bigger. So we're on red. Then if we look at blue, straight away, blue becomes bigger. And then green, we're not really worried about like orange or yellow or working out what kind of shade this is. I'm just looking for these three basic colors because we only had two, two teams with two different colors. Um, but that works really well, really nicely. We'll see how fast it is though when it comes to uh, basketballs flying past this sensor. So that might be a bit of a sticking point for us. So let's go test it out on the field. I mean the court. We've had some really horrific weather lately in the UK, so I've not been not managed to get outside to the court. Um, so I'm filming inside with next to this table so I can drop um, the ball down. And this video was way too short, so you knew this wasn't going to finish soon. <laughs> so the code doesn't work. Let me show you. I've changed the Adafruit code a little bit to show um, red, green, or blue, depending on which is the greatest number, on the actual microbit screen, so we don't have to rely on the serial. You will notice that it always runs a bit red, uh, and if you hold the light up to like a white sheet, you can kind of see it's a it's kind of a pinkish light. So I'm imagining that's why it's doing that. So if we hold up green here, we don't get we get green, and then it automatically goes back to red. But it's not doing a great job. <laughs> It sounds bad actually, you know, it's fast, but I think we can do better. I think we can calibrate this to make it a bit better. Let's have a look at the code. Check out the Element 14 community if you want to see the code in more detail. Here's that Adafruit code that I've slightly edited. So I've added the matrix here and you need to say microbit.begin in the setup to get that to display. So some really bad C code. If red is greater than green and red is greater than blue, then we display red on the microbit. Like we saw with the Lego men, however, the numbers are just too close together. And just because red is the greatest number does not mean that red is being displayed. So I think we can do some calibration. So I changed the code around a lot. I've got more variables up here in setup. What I'm doing now is I'm doing calibration routine and I'll show you that running. But basically you press button A, and you hold up a black card to it to record black, and then you hold up a white card and press button B. And that gives us our base numbers, you know, our scale basically. Then we can start actually calibrating the numbers. And you'll see this is a lot more accurate. Okay, so I've got this uh, huge black box. Um, if I move it closer, I might get some better numbers. Okay, we're just gonna accept that as uh, black. So I'm just gonna hold this there and press A. Okay, so it's recorded black red is 22. I'm only recording, uh, printing out red for now. Then I'll get my white sheet kind of in a similar position. So white seems a lot better there. You definitely see the pink tint in the light though. Okay, and then we're gonna press B on the micro bit and that will calibrate our white. Now we've got some new numbers. So we hold red, we definitely got red. I should clear the screen actually, uh, after a while. Can you see that? That's our red. Okay. Hey, <laughs> that was better, wasn't it? Oh, it needs to be accurate, otherwise it's gonna be like World War Three in the office. Um, if I go, whoop, yeah. I think it's the size of uh, the ball it needs to be bigger. Oh, that was better, wasn't it? Oh. Blue, <gasps> we can't be going blue now. Red, definitely red. <laughs> Green. Okay, I'm much happier with that. You know, it seems, it's definitely more accurate anyway. But if you think of like the space in a basketball hoop, there's not much space for the ball. You know, it's it's a really snug fit. So the sensor is gonna be very close to the ball. So that I'm not worried actually too much about how close it is. I'm just more worried about the speed that it goes. And I think it's just the surface area, which is the problem here. And I'm also doing a lot of serial prints over there. So if I take all them out, Hopefully that will speed things up. 
Do you like free stuff? You can join the Rotest program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Rotest program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? Can you... Can you hear the rain? <laughs> so, still waiting for uh, an outdoor day in the UK. Maybe I might just bring the basketball hoop indoors. While we're waiting for that impossible day, um, I'm gonna code up the lights. So I wanted these lights to appear whenever the team scored a goal, these lights would uh, change the color of that team. I had a few problems with these. So I got this uh, strip from Fresnel and that was awesome because it's individually controllable red, green, blue LEDs, which is exactly what I wanted in five volts and it's got uh, croc clips at the end so I thought oh this is perfect I'll just croc clip this to the micro bit then I realized that I'm actually I need that breakout board you saw me sold this up earlier so I can't croc clip this so I'd have to chop it off add some headers and it's like no um so I've gone for the second option I've gone, I'm gonna send a radio signal. So when it's a score on, and the sensor finds out on micro bit A, it sends a signal to micro bit B, which is connected to the near pixels and that changes to red. Um, which sounds like a great idea, didn't it? Didn't it? Didn't it? But I was using a V2 on the sensor one because I wanted to make like a little beepy sound when they scored a goal. But now uh, the radio does not work in Arduino on v2 so unfortunately i had to switch to uh, version one for both micro bits i might i can still add a speaker you know it's, it's not a problem you can add a speaker to the breakout board but it just took me like half an hour to realize that was the problem that i was using uh, a v2 and it's just it's just computing isn't it guys <laughs> you, you think you're getting somewhere and then you just something if something throws a spanner in the works so I'm gonna send a number when it gets it text red, it's gonna send one, green, two, blue, three, from that micro bit with the color sensor to this micro bit with the NeoPixel strip, and the strip will change depending on the color of the ball. Here's that code running then. Red <laughs> and green. There's our two teams. Let's grab uh, some blue. Let's see. Is this book blue enough? Yes. <laughs> oh no. Looking a bit closer at the setup then. So I've got my micro bit and the sensor is just inside the hill. Then I've got my RGB LED strip around the edge connected to the other micro bit which is just hanging here. I have these uh, two battery packs because whenever so the two micro bits were charged off one pack initially, whenever the lights came on it would restart everything so I'd have to recalibrate the sensor so it just wasn't working. So uh, I'm not sure if it's that battery pack or it's a problem with the NeoPixels pulling in too much power, probably that actually. So it's not ideal having two battery packs. You can always plug this in if you were indoors as well. This is definitely something going on with the power on the color sensor. It's just shutting down after a couple of senses. Um, which I don't understand why, it's not like it's it's doing anything crazy. It should be within the limits of, you know, the micro bit, the battery pack. Um, I don't really want to bring a laptop out here to to do the final demo. Maybe I should just unplug it from the wall. So I did um, pull it off the wall outside and bring it indoors. Uh, it's not an ideal situation for it, I'll admit. But, and it's also, it's too big, so I haven't got the balls that are different colored balls that are the right size to properly catch the sensor. Um, the one at work would have been perfect since it's such a smaller hoop, 
but I'm not allowed to film at work and uh, my colleagues wouldn't let me take it home. <laughs> so it's not ideal, but it's almost like a new game. So the sensor doesn't work over here. This is a, a ball of wool, which is the biggest red thing I have. Um, but if you hit the square, it bounces off and it hits the sensor and um, it works every time. So, <laughs> and this is green. Yeah, so it's like a new game. Um, instead of like basketball, it's um, basketball hit the square first. <laughs> there were loads of issues with this project. The Micro V2 not working on radio using Arduino. The um, sensor, I'm still not solved that problem where it kind of it kept dying on me when it was on batteries. And what else? Well, the British weather also had it against me for a while. <laughs> But I think um, this is, it's the fun of computing is solving these problems, isn't it? It's finding the solutions. Uh, it can get frustrating at times though. I have to thank Katie for giving me the idea for this project. I was... I was completely out of ideas. And she let me borrow this from her list of ideas because she's like, any of these ideas. I'm, I'm stuck guys, you have to help me out here. What do you want my next project to be? Um, what do you want me? I could add a scoreboard on here, or it could be nothing to do with basketball. Have a look at my other videos in the Element 14 community and let me know. Until next time.